Brace yourselves as we explore the covert operations, rigorous training, and unparalleled skills that define exceptional units known as Special Forces. From the Navy SEALs to the shadowy heroes of the SAS, you'll go on an exhilarating journey that showcases the absolute best of the best. Prepare yourself to witness the true epitome of strength, precision, and unwavering dedication. These are the 20 most elite Special Forces in the world. Number 20. Spetsnaz, Russia's version of the SAS The Specialist Reconnaissance Wing of the Russian Army, the Spetsnaz, or Special Designation, is a light infantry force that is in a similar vein to the U.S. 75th Ranger Regiment rather than a commando squad. That being said, this is a highly specialized unit with great skills in counterinsurgency and recon, which is generally sent on missions for power projection and against insurgency in contemporary war zones. The Spetsnaz has played an important role in many recent conflicts in Syria and Crimea, and this unit is apparently geared towards what is euphemistically called political warfare, which is how the power powers that be in Moscow refer to these sorts of combinations of traditional military missions with covert measures, which is a roundabout way of saying sneaky stuff. The Spetsnaz elite force are generally used for training guerrillas, for reconnaissance on the battlefield, covert operations, and sabotage behind enemy lines. As part of a Russian military intelligence, this unit is a strategic asset which Moscow deploys to add an additional layer of influence where they choose. Some might say that these soldiers are 100 times more dangerous than an army. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. In the shadows of Mexico, a force lurks that strikes fear into the hearts of its enemies, the Mexican Special Forces. These soldiers are said to be 100 times more dangerous than any army. Trained in the crucible of danger and chaos, these elite warriors operate in a world where the line between life and death is razor thin. Featuring nerves of steel and unparalleled skill, they navigate the deadliest of battlegrounds, combating ruthless drug cartels, and preserving national security. The covert operations home through through relentless training involve infiltration, high-stakes hostage rescue, and clandestine intelligence gathering, every single mission becomes a high-stakes gamble, where failure is not the option. As always, you can let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag SweetTopic. Number 19. Iraq's Counterterrorism Service after the fall of Saddam Hussein's regime in Iraq, the first unit of the new Iraqi Special Forces that would be developed was the 36th Commando Battalion, which is the most important part of the Iraqi Counterterrorism Service. This counterterrorism force was one of the first things to have been established by the United States after the initial stages of war. It is a force of fewer than 8,000 elite troops who have been designed, allegedly, to be the best military and political force that is in opposition to the threat of Islamic State, or ISIL, in the region. The whole idea behind this counter-terrorism service is a united and multi-ethnic cross-sectarian group that would bring together the many facets of the Iraqi people against terrorism. The territory of Iraq is a difficult and diverse environment to keep guarded and under military control. There are mountains, urban areas, deserts, and borderlands, and all that require different skills and types of military response. This counterterrorism service is equipped to deal with the various challenges of the terrain. Number 18. U.S. Special Forces the United States Army is the most formidable, well-equipped, and high-tech of the armed forces in the whole entire world. It is made up of many different branches and subsections with lots of different specialisms. There are many special operations forces that operate under the authority of the U.S. Armed Forces. These special forces are used for the most high-risk missions. There are currently about 70,000 personnel across all of the special forces in the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps, and it's such a significant proportion of the overall armed forces of the United States that it could even be considered a fifth branch in its own right. 
The special forces have all their own equipment, which includes aircraft, boats, and their own support services. The main uses for most special forces are covert operations where discretion or finesse is needed, direct action missions like assassinations, hostage rescue, or even capture of enemy personnel. These forces are often trained to do reconnaissance work deep within enemy territory, and there are some especially famous ones like the Navy SEALs. Number 17. Marcos the Marine Commando Force, also known as Marcos, is an elite unit of the Indian Navy. They are highly trained and super badass. Oh, and they're famous for their beards. Okay, the Marcos are a special operations team that are part of the Indian Navy, so as you may expect, their specialism is primarily in amphibious warfare. However, their squad are not confined to the watery environment of the Seven Seas. As a modern-day combat force, they're trained to the highest levels to operate in all terrains, and in our current-day world, their primary objective is counterterrorism. Amongst the most highly respected and finest of special forces, the Marcos are one of the very few who are qualified to enter the water with fully loaded combat gear. As well as their extraordinary skills in the water, this unit performs direct action, hostage rescue, unconventional war warfare, and special reconnaissance, amongst many other operations across all terrains. They are feared amongst terrorists operating in their region, and known by them as the Bearded Army, on the account of their uncanny ability to sport a bearded disguise when on operations in civilian areas. Now, how many people can actually pull off a fake beard disguise that doesn't result in pointing and laughing, let alone instill fear into the hearts of hardened terrorists? These must be some very scary dudes. Number 16. Special Boat Service the Special Boat Service is the United Kingdom's Maritime Special Forces Unit. It's existed since the Second World War, and this special force began as several units that used small boats, submarines, and even canoes during the War of 1939 to 1945 to undertake raids, recon, and sabotage. The forces back then included the Army Commandos Special Boat Section, the Royal Marines Boom Patrol Detachment, and the Combined Operations Pilotage Parties. Following the war, these groups disbanded, but many of the jobs that they did were taken on by the Royal Marines Combined Operations Beach and Boat Section. The force went through many versions over the next few decades before finally becoming the SBS, or Special Boat Service, in 1987. To join this special force, candidates must undergo some of the toughest and most grueling selection processes of any unit in the world. The SBS is often used to carry out secret undercover raids, and the modern Special Boat Service Service is a significant part of the UK's counterterrorism response capabilities at sea. Number 15. GIGN the highly trained GIGN are specialists in hostage rescue and counter-terrorist operations in France. They're employed to respond to major threats, both within France and elsewhere in the world. In 2007, the GIGN underwent a major reshuffling in which the unit absorbed several other teams and became a consolidated 380-member unit. This was to increase to 420 members by the year 2010. The idea behind the joining together of the groups was that it would be possible to deploy 200 strong units to any given situation should a larger scale intervention be required. Now, this is part of the French government's general militarization of the police force within the country in the recent decades as they've become a heavily armed combat force with specialist training and tactical equipment. As the nature of threats to public safety has changed in the modern world, so too has the kind of training that's required. The GIGN has now become a highly specialized intervention squad with super skills in large-scale hostage situations, and that this is even a thing that needs so many trained combat forces kind of gives me the proper creeps. Number 14. Navy SEAL The formidable U.S. Navy SEALs are named for the places that they operate, the sea, the air, and the land. This highly trained, super organized, and most equipped of combat forces is the envy of the rest of the military world. The history of the Navy SEALs lies in the Second World War, where the units of elite frogmen first came into prominence in operation. Nowadays, the SEALs are not restricted to the water. They conduct missions in all sorts of environments of all elite forces on Earth. Selection for this special operations unit is based on three fundamental aspects. 
the candidates must be what they call men of character. This is an obvious point, really, but it is absolutely essential that the recruits be men of courage, honor, and commitment. This is not a job that any Tom, Dick, or Harry can do without those personality traits. Secondly, the physical demands on being an elite Navy SEAL require that the chosen individuals be extremely fit and able to perform at the highest level in all environments, in particular in the water. And thirdly, the recruits must possess intelligence and ability to rapidly learn tasks and to adapt to changing situations. This elite special force is often deployed to conduct reconnaissance missions or anti-terrorist actions, often behind the enemy lines, or they're simply sent in to engage in raids or assaults on enemy targets. When the U.S. would lead operations to attack the then-leader of al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden, in 2011, it was the Navy SEALs that were called upon to perform that task. Number 13. Special Service Group Created in 1956, the Special Service Group, also known as the SSG, is Pakistan's elite armed forces unit, which is comprised of only the very cream of the crop, the real strength of which is a closely guarded classified secret. There's nothing to see here, you know. In a part of the world where there's often conflict, the need for a unit of highly trained and extremely disciplined soldiers is often a priority. And Pakistan is no different. Since its inception, the SSG has played a significant role in every major confrontation that the country has been involved in. So how do these soldiers even become SSG in the first place? Well, in order to be considered, they must have at least five years previous military experience, and they can then take part in a nine-month course at the SSG base in the city of Sharat. This course is the kind of intensive training that you would expect, like a montage sequence in a movie, marching in full gear, airborne training, hand-to-hand -hand combat, intense physical training, and more. Standard stuff for the most toughest of recruits, and they really are the toughest, because only about 5% of them ever make it through the training and join the SSG. Number 12. Danish Special Forces when you think about Denmark, you probably think about things like amazing architecture, the outstanding way they treat maternity leave, and of course, everyone's favorite, the Lego. But what you probably don't consider is that the country who is touted as being one of the happiest places on Earth actually has a badass special forces brigade. The Jaeger Corps is the elite special operations force of Denmark and boasts many branches, which includes the Special Operations Command, whose training regiment rivals that of other special operations groups like the British SAS and the famous U.S. Army Rangers. The special operations force is well-trained in feats and skills like unconventional warfare, Recon, counterterrorism, and more. And that's pretty good for a country whose most famous and popular street food is the hot dog. To trace its origins, we go back to when Sweden was being a bit of a giant bully to Denmark. Now I know, Sweden bullying anyone, it is laughable at best, but that's exactly what happened. In 1785, the good year that it was, Sweden decided to get together with Prussia and Great Britain and cause quite the nuisance. That's when Denmark was like, hell no, Swedes and they formed a light infantry unit that was made up of skilled hunters and woodsmen. This unit would eventually become what is today known as the Jaeger Corps. But getting to where they are now would take a lot of years and many wars, which included the Cold War. Today, though, the Huntsmen, as they're known, are responsible for assisting many operations throughout the world, which includes their old one-time enemy, Sweden, and are well-respected as an organization that also cross-trains with many countries who once considered them both a threat and an enemy. Number 11. Snow Leopard Commando Unit the Snow Leopard Commando Unit is a super elite tactical unit of the Chinese police force. Part of the People's Armed Police, they used to be known as the Snow Wolf Commando Unit. This unit is mainly used for counter-terrorism duties or things like hostage rescue and high-risk arrests. They're also the very heavily armed and military-styled police that are seen at protests or riots, as they're sometimes known in police circles. Highly trained and thoroughly equipped, the Snow Leopard Commandos are prepared to deal with hijackings, weapons of mass destruction, based terrorism, bomb disposal, and the usual law enforcement stuff as well. They're also known as being super badass on the account of these forces' ability to survive in extreme and dangerous conditions, hence their snow-styled name. Number 10. GSG Elite Police Unit 
In the aftermath of the massacre at the 1972 Olympic Games in Munich, the German police force was in deep disgrace. There had been a deliberate relaxation of security in a misguided effort to prove to the world that Germany had moved away from the aggressive militarism of its past. The 11 Israeli athletes would be taken hostage and murdered after a failed attempt by the West German police to stage an intervention. It was in this climate that the GSG-9 would be created. This is the Border Protection Group, an elite unit within Germany's federal police. This squad has been involved in some high-profile operations, with its first being the hijacking of a Lufthansa flight in 1977, where following a few days of mad demands and landings all over Europe, the plane ended up in Somalia, where the GSG-9 force was sent to neutralize the situation. And they did with merciless efficiency, taking out four terrorists and rescuing the remaining hostage. The whole show restored confidence in the ability of the German security forces, and since then, most of the stuff this team gets up to is classified. However, they did a few public-facing Cold War missions against the Red Army, keeping up the image of the GSG-9 as a badass Western fighting force in the 20th century's war games. These days, they're much like any other special forces, in that they're highly trained counter-terrorist units with a bunch of combat skills, which includes explosives, marksmanship, assault training, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and all that other clever tactical stuff. Number 9. EKO Cobra An elite Australian unit, EKO Cobra is under the direct orders of the Federal Ministry for the Interior. It is a dedicated counter-terrorism unit which would be established in 1978. It was during this era that many countries were beginning to create specialist anti-terror forces following the horrific deadly attack on Israeli athletes at the 1972 Munich Olympic Games. EKO Cobra uses a bunch of specialist equipment, which includes all of the Kevlar and camouflage that you would likely expect out of some commandos. They're armed with mainly Australian weaponry and plenty of it as well. They are trained in specialized areas like explosives, sniping, parachuting, and diving, and as the threats of terrorist activity adapt and expand, so too must the counter-terrorist forces that are out there combating them. EKO Cobra is one of the special forces leading the way in diversifying the future and proofing for what might come next in the apparently now eternal so-called War on Terror. Number 8. GIS Special Intervention Group Well, it's well known that the Carabinieri, Italy's military police, are by far the most snazzily dressed and dapper of all the various armed organizations out there. So what does their elite special intervention group look like? Well, boiler suit clad ninjas, actually. Seemingly surgically attached to their balaclavas, the GIS are highly skilled, heavily armed, and disappointingly dressed more or less like all elite armed forces in the modern world. But they do seem particularly keen on their eye-peeping headwear. As well as their outfits, there are few other things that put the GIS into the category of world's most elite special forces. These guys are selected initially on their motivation, and then they're required to participate in a five months long initial training course in which they do copious amounts of martial arts training, tactics, English language study, explosives, topography, photography, terrorist ideology, and some combat shooting as well. A well-rounded curriculum for sure. And after this training, the selected recruits will then go on to specialize and take courses in such things like combat driving at Ferrari no less, and so far, this special intervention group sounds like the most fun of these special forces. What do you reckon? Number 7. Jag Commando Special Forces this team of soldiers has a badass name. They pretty much sound really scary indeed. When translated, Jog Commando means Manhunt Command, which is still a fierce moniker, and you more than likely would not want these guys to be pursuing you. The Australian Special Forces, as they exist today, began in earnest after World War II, with the elite Jog Commando being established after two Austrian officers took part in a training program with the U.S. Army Rangers in 1961. This has been their training 
training style ever since, using a combination of their own local skills and tactics, and taking additional armed forces training with the United States or other European armies. This unit has been deployed in many a modern-day battlefield, which includes the Balkans, Afghanistan, and Chad. And if you want to join this team of exceptional individuals, you only have to undergo one of the toughest selection processes in the world. The brutal testing includes the infamous 72-hour field exercise, in which candidates suffer extreme tests of physical endurance, endless marching, psychological pressure tests, and total sleep deprivation during the entire 72 hours. Most will end up failing, and only about 20% ever make it to the next level, which is the basic training course. This entails freezing weather conditions, loads of snow, almost no sleep, and intense physical endurance. These recruits are subjected to days of being hunted through harsh terrain with helicopters, dogs, and infantry, all before being captured and then subjected to the final 72-hour-long captivity phase, which frankly sounds right like a barrel of laughs, you know. Number 6. Shayatet 13 the elite commando unit of the Israeli Navy, the Shayatet 13, also known as S-13, Special Force, is generally considered to be the Israeli version of the United States Navy SEALs. Like many of the other special forces on the list today, the troops of S-13 are utilized in various counterterrorism activities, which also includes marine intelligence gathering, hostage situations, sabotage, and other sea-to-land incursions. The unit would be formed in 1948 from a group of men who were selected from the naval branch of the Haganah. This was the underground Jewish defense force that existed during the British Mandate. It would merge with the other underground groups after the declaration of the State of Israel, and the S-13 then remained secret until 1960. They're generally tasked with reconnaissance, infiltration, and sabotage missions, and have been involved in all of Israel's wars since their inception. Most famously, this special force has been involved in the Lebanon War of the 1980s and the Second Lebanon War in 2006, when they were part of the IDF's missions that flew behind enemy lines and raided alleged Hezbollah strongholds, killing many of the Hezbollah commanders at the time. Number 5. Delta Force the shadowy figure of the Delta Force lives somewhere in our collective consciousness, in the form of all the movies and video game depictions of this elite squad of badass soldiers. It's inspired many a paintball battle and sparked the imagination of children who grew up wanting to be soldiers. Officially known as the 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment, Delta Force is a U.S. Special Missions unit with a primary objective of counterterrorism. This is clearly a modern-day obsession in all of the armed forces that we've looked at so far. As part of their extensive training, Delta Force not only excels at counter-terrorist operations, but they're highly skilled in hostage rescue, direct action missions, and covert ops. Often working, secretly, alongside the CIA, Delta Force also provides elite protection services to United States leaders when overseas. Delta Force would be created in 1977 as a precision strike force unit in response to the increase increase in terrorist activity around the world during that era. Although most of the operations that they've been involved with remain classified, there have been some that are documented in books and the media, and these no doubt add to the unit's unique perception in the public image. This elite special force is famous for being responsible for such exploits as locating Saddam Hussein, the capture of El Chapo, and they were part of the joint engagement to capture or kill Osama bin Laden. Number 4. New Zealand Army Special Air Service the NZSAS has been in operation since all the way back in 1955. This special forces branch of the New Zealand Army was inspired by the British SAS, and it follows many of the same structural and technical elements with that most famous elite unit. This is New Zealand's Defense Force's premier armed combat unit and has been deployed all around the globe from Afghanistan to the Pacific to Southeast Asian jungle environments. This elite squad has all the skills for all of the different theaters of war, and the highly trained NZSAS has all the usual counter-terrorism responsibilities that seem to be standard for these elite special forces these days. But they're also prepared for special ops overseas and the technically difficult disposal of radioactive, chemical, and biological devices, as well as the ubiquitous improvised explosive devices that dominate the battlefield in modern times. Such fun. But you know that being an elite force isn't all booby traps and shoot 'em ups. Sometimes they just have to tidy up some messes. Number 3 
Sayeret Matkal, Special Forces Unit of IDF. Also known as General Staff Reconnaissance Unit 269, Sayeret Matkal is the most famous of the Special Commando Units within the Israeli Defense Forces, or IDF. This special force would be founded all the way back in 1957, and since then, they've been major players in pretty much every conflict in which Israel has taken part in. They are known as a crack counter-terrorist unit, as well as being the most highly skilled intelligence gathering, reconnaissance, and rescue mission force. The highly trained unit is a specialist in missions that take place behind enemy lines, although many of the details are top secret, and they're believed to have taken part in several high-profile but still secret missions, which include sabotage and capture missions, as well as rescuing hostages and foiling terrorist plots. This small and secret unit has had an oddly large number of famous and powerful people emerge from its ranks and into politics. Number 2. J.W. Grom one of the five operations units in the Polish Armed Forces, JW Grom, or the Operational Maneuver Response Group, is deployed to many special operations, anti-terrorist actions, and infiltrations behind enemy lines. These are the elite soldiers of Military Unit 2305, and they are very serious indeed. To become a serving member of JW Grom, candidates have to pass a series of rigorous psychological and endurance testing, including the interesting and somewhat scary-sounding truth test. Just what that entails is known to those who have suffered the intensely grueling physical and psychological field test that's designed to separate the wheat from the chaff. Following selection, these chosen few then undergo a specialized training regime, which equips them in a variety of disciplines, in particular anti-terrorism, sniping, parachuting, and diving. And following this, approximately 75% of these recruits are then trained as medics. This elite unit is trained to be the highest of levels of military strategy and they're known to use capture or kill methods. As well as its intense training, the Grom are equipped with some of the most formidable weaponry that's available today. Number 1. Joint Task Force 2 the snappily named Joint Task Force 2, or JTF-2, is a Canadian Special Operations Force. I wonder why they went with being the number 2 force, though. It doesn't make them sound the absolute best now, does it? More like the backup guys. You know, the number 2s. JTF-2 was formally assembled back in 1993 and immediately became Canada's main counter-terrorism unit. They serve along with the Canadian Special Operations Regiment, the Canadian Joint Incident Response Unit, and the Special Operations Aviation squadron. Together, these elite teams make the Canadian Special Operations Forces command, but let's just hope that they're better at the combat stuff than they are at naming things. It turns out, as you may expect, that most of the information about the Canadian government's counter-terrorism unit is actually classified, and there's not much point in putting all of your tactics out there on the internet now, is there? But what we do know is that, since their formation, the JTF-2 commandos have been deployed to many major conflicts around the globe, which includes Bosnia, Afghanistan, Haiti, and Iraq. They've been at the forefront of the so-called War on Terror, as well as more domestic duties like pulling security detail at the Winter Olympics in 2010, or being on guard duty for Canadians who are traveling overseas. But they mostly remain super secretive, and they barely even pop up in video games or movies. I just wonder what they're up to in Canada that needs to be kept so very secret indeed. So it seems that most places in the world have some sort of super elite, highly trained, and well-equipped armed forces. That's just a fairly safe assumption. Some of them, however, may be more terrifying and dangerous than others. Which of these special forces seems the most badass to you? As always, let me know all of your spectacular thoughts in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.